this presentation, the valuable bull and considerations before the big purchase is part of the Alvin Warnick Reproduction Management School video series. I am Sonia Crawford, UF IFAS Hendrick County Extension Service 4-H Livestock Agent. Selecting the right set of bulls is important in one's cattle operation. You need to think about your plans as a rancher. Are the needs to keep heifers, sell feeder calves, retain ownership, or a combination? Striving to produce a calf each year, the selected bull must be structurally, physically sound, fertile, with a high libido. Selling calves to meet the demand at the feedlot, bulls must be one that will produce a calf heavier at weaning and is likely to produce a calf that will yield a higher quality carcass. Docility is a concern among producers as well. Temperament is a heritable trait. No one wants a bull that will tear down the pins each time worked, is a fence jumper, or contribute a bad temper to their offspring. Buying a bull or multiple bulls is a big investment. It is best to select bulls from a well-established producer with a great reputation that will provide a breeding soundness exam certification. The breeding soundness exam will provide information such as, but not limited to, physical soundness, reproductive tract soundness, percentage and motility of sperm cells, and scrotal circumference. The rancher should visually assess the appearance of the bull or bulls prior to purchase. Bad legs and their hooves reduces longevity and prevents the bull from traveling to his girls. Bulls will spend a lot of time on his back legs during the breeding season. Look at the bull's eyes, sheep, hair, as well as evaluate his breathing for any respiratory concerns. The body condition of a bull says a lot as well. You want a bull that will have enough frame and muscling to contribute to the offspring for more dollars in your pocket at sale time. At the same time, you want to evaluate the bull's shoulder to make sure they aren't too wide to contribute to calving problems. Look to see if the bull has excessive fat around the scrotal area. Excessive fat around the scrotum will act as a heat insulator, contributing to reduction in sperm production. Prior to the sale, become familiar with the sale catalog, if available. The catalog will consist of important information, such as sale information, delivery of the bulls, the expected progeny difference to use to select the best bull or bulls for the operation. Don't be afraid to mark up the catalog with notes prior to sale. Be sure to take your notes with you to the sale. Bull fertility is affected by many factors such as age and structural soundness. Older bulls cover more cows. The rule of thumb is one bull per 20 to 25 females. The social dominance effect such as young to small bulls with more mature bulls may reduce bull fertility. The environment and the nutrition available are also among other causes of bull fertility. Fertility may become low due to disease or the presence of toxins. In conjunction with evaluating bulls visually, one should consider expected progeny difference referred to as EPDs. EPDs are a set of traits used to compare breeding stock of the same breed in the areas of growth, maternal, and carcass. These traits not limited to birth weight, weaning weight, yearling weight, mature weight, calving ease direct, calving ease maternal, maternal milk, carcass weight, marbling, ribeye area, and fat thickness. Growth EPDs not limited to birth weight, weaning weight, yearling weight, and mature weight. Birth weight is expressed in pounds, predicting the offspring's weight at birth. Birth weight is an indirect measurement of calving ease. Weaning weight is also expressed in pounds, predicting the offspring's weight at weaning. Yearling weight is expressed in pounds predicting the offspring's yearling weight and the growth weight performance at the feed yard. Mature weight is also expressed in pounds predicting the difference in the mature weight of daughters of a sire compared to the daughters of other sires. 
maternal EPDs, not limited to calving ease direct, calving ease maternal, and maternal milk. Calving ease direct is expressed as a difference in percent of unassisted births. Calving ease maternal is expressed as a difference in percent of unassisted birth and is a predictor of the sire's daughter's calving ease. Maternal milk predicts the sire's daughter's mothering ability and merit of milk for heifer replacements. Carcass EPDs not limited to carcass weight, marbling, ribeye area, and fat thickness. Carcass weight is expressed in pounds predicting the offspring's hot carcass weight. Marbling is expressed as a fraction of difference in USDA marbling score of the offspring. Ribeye area is expressed in square inches predicting the difference in the ribeye area of the offspring. Fat thickness is expressed in inches and is the difference measured at the 12th and 13th rib, three quarters up of the ribeye. Bulls with a higher ribeye is an indication that the bull may sire calves that are heavier muscle yielding a higher quality carcass depending on the fat thickness. Which bull would you choose if you needed to purchase five bulls to run with the hundred females? You will be keeping some of the offspring for replacements and selling the remaining calves at the market. Bull B wins the selection. Bull B's offspring is predicted to be 20 pounds heavier at weaning and 30 pounds heavier in the feedlot. Bull B should produce calves that will possess ribeyes a half square inch larger and produce a 30 pound heavier carcass. Unassisted births would be 5% more from heifers bred by bull B compared to those bred by bull A. Understanding EPDs is confusing and takes a little time to solve the information. EPDs can't be used to compare bulls from different breeds, can't be used to predict direct outcomes, overcome poor management, predict structural soundness or longevity, or fix a bull that is difficult to look at. EPDs serve as an opportunity to increase or improve the genetics within the herd. One must decide what is important to his or her operation. Focusing on one trait for the sole purpose of selection should be avoided. Each year, a breeding soundness exam should be performed 60 days prior to the breeding season. If a bull scores low on the soundness exam, the bull should be rechecked in 60 days. Use this basic information provided in this presentation to select your next set of bulls for your cattle operation. Thank you.